Hi everyone, hi Jessica. Just trying to get my camera straight. I've got two cameras going on at one time. Again, welcome everyone. You got my time difference, right? I would hope that um, Facebook would convert it. Like if it's easy, if I set it to Eastern time that it would convert your time zone, which is weird. Back at it, yes I am. So I'm going back and forth between, I have two tripods set up, two cameras going at the same time. I tried to do it differently so that I'm kind of more centered for everybody. So um, hang on a second, let me turn off. Okay, do not disturb. Um, so you'll see me looking back and forth because I'm looking at both cameras. Oh, I'm not on Facebook, so the confusion is all on me. Yeah, sorry, I'm so, there's a, a phone right here in front that I'm talking to our private Facebook group for those of them that don't have Instagram and then I'm also going live at the same time on Instagram so this one over here that I'm pointing at behind is Instagram and this one over here is uh, Facebook for our private Facebook group so yep I'm going live on both but I see you guys coming in here <sighs> How's everyone doing tonight? Before we get started, just want to say hello to everybody and thanks for joining us. It has been an extremely exhausting past couple of days for your girl. Essence, you made it. Hello. Um, came home from BookCon late Sunday night, so still trying to recoup from my travels on that. Hi, everyone that keeps joining us. Um, so, yeah. It's been a crazy, crazy past few days, but um, we are on here today to talk about Heads of the Colored People by Nafisa Thompson Spires. Super excited to talk about this one. Not gonna lie, I just finished it like four hours ago. Um, I've been slacking. I'm in a, in a reading slump. I don't know about y'all, but I've just been... I had a goal of reading like four books and I maybe I finished three actually well this doesn't count as May but um yeah I've been struggling to finish books lately so it's it's been all kinds of crazy um anyways I thought that this was a cute little collection of short stories school year wrapping up oh you guys aren't done yet where where do you live Someone said that they're still, um, their school year is wrapping up, which, you know, for us in Georgia, we finished before the Thursday before Memorial Day weekend. So um, I know up north, they usually tend to start later than we do and finish later than we do. So Washington State. So yeah, we've got some that are still in school. I'm fortunate to not have to deal with that right now, but sports and work are consuming my life right now. Um, anywho. Michigan is done in June. Okay, yep, that's what I figured, more nor northern. Anyways, so we're going to talk about the heads of the colored people. Um, I thought it was a great, I love the short stories. Um, I don't, I didn't have any expectations going into it other than knowing that it was a national um, book award winner for long list. Um, I've heard great things about it, but really had no clue as to what the stories were about, what to expect. So in the comments, if y'all can just spit out what your thoughts were overall of this book, um, would love to hear maybe what you rated it or just what you thought, good, bad, the ugly. Um, there's so much, like there's so many different stories, just things that I wasn't expecting and, and didn't know where she was going with these stories. And the twist and turns, just so many unexpected things that happened. And I was like, I wasn't expecting that story to go there. Um, 
and just her imagination to even write a story like that. Like, where do you come up with these thoughts and these ideas? Um, sorry, I'm banging my camera. So you're trying to do too much. So someone, oh, happy day reads said, I loved it. And I just got a copy with the UK cover in the mail today. It's gorgeous. Is it the, the black cover with the kind of like, it's the same like squiggly heads, but it's black. Four out of five. Jessica said, I absolutely loved it. Gave it five stars. I didn't have any expectations either, which made it much better. I agree. Charlotte said, really liked it. So many interesting stories and themes. Yes. Um, so I really had to like come home and do my research and kind of like go through notes because some of the stories obviously overlapped with some of the characters. So I had to like really refresh myself and remember what was what. Essence said too much, did audio, need to read next time. The transition from one story to the other wasn't smooth. Sometimes I was like, wait, who are these people? I agree with that. Um, for me with audio, I probably rewound this audio book more than I have other books in the past just because I felt like if I missed 30 seconds of, if I zoned out for whatever reason, it was like I missed major chunks because they're such short stories. So I had to go back and like, really listen over and over again so that was part of my struggle to get through it although it was great it was just me not focusing um my favorite was the one with the suicidal character yes the ending okay wait let me go back um glam bistro said i read this a few months ago so my memory <laughs> needs to be refreshed yes same and i just finished it today but the story with the two professors annoyed me that's funny you say that because i was actually probably one of my favorites but they both were super annoying with the lights and turning them on turning them off and he just felt so entitled in that she should just cooperate with him. And it's like, what do you do in this tiny space? Um, no, it's the one with the actual faces. I'll inbox it to you. Please do. I would love to see that, the cover. Um, yeah, but it was just, I that the one with the professors was my favorite, or one of my top three, I would say. Um, the suicidal one, because of the way it ended, was one of my favorites. And then I also loved, um, I think my favorite was the two mothers writing notes back and forth. I think that was hysterical. Like they're just going back and forth and back and forth and sending notes. It's crazy. Anna said five out of five stars. It's my favorite short story collection of 2018. Definitely. Um, I think of the short stories, I don't read short stories too often, but I think of the ones that I've read, this is definitely my favorite. Um, Again, for those that are just joining, we're talking heads of the colored people. Um, yeah, the petty moms. I saw you comment that. I was going back and looking at our comments in the Facebook group. Definitely a uh, pe uh, pettiness. Yeah. The Bell's letters. It was, yeah, so good. I agree. Okay. Let's see what these comments on Facebook. I love that one too. And the letters between the mothers. Yes, my favorite. Lafayette, yes, the professors were funny, but LOL, when he left and she had the lights off in her new office mate, I, that was like the kicker for me. I'm like, all of that, y'all going back and forth about keeping these lights on and off and all that for him to move out of the office and she keeps them off anyway. I'm like, y'all could have just been fine with each other had you done that a long time ago. I love parts in the book. Other parts were so weird. I felt like a lot of the stories were weird, just how they ended, what happened, um... I'm trying to go back. I had to seriously look up notes because there was just so much so much going on. Um, like Wash Clean the Bones was a weird one for me with the, the mother who was witnessing death and then she was about to drown her kid at the end. I was like, what are you doing? Um, the irony in the suicidal one. And it's kind of a reminder. That one to me kind of touched home, I guess, because social media and it's what I do for a living outside of Book Girl Magic. Um, yeah, I do have a real job <laughs> working for the government doing social media. But it just when you watch patterns and, and people and the things that they tend to do, a lot of people will do stuff for the gram, for Facebook or whatever. So it was like she was crying out for attention in her Facebook post by posting these sad songs, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Um, you know, all different kinds of things and all these people were just like giving her kudos, like great song. You're you're on a roll today, like um and nobody really caught on except for her mom towards the end, but it's just amazing the things that we do for attention. Um 
consult or what I shouldn't say we because I that's inclusive of everyone what some people will do for attention um on social media Erica said I love the two mothers but adult Fatima made me sad yeah it's amazing to see the progression of Fatima um in those different stories oh I think another one that I that I was intrigued me was um Which is the one... Okay, so Fatima... Yeah, a transformation story. The story of the young biracial teenager who feels out of place in her all-white prep school. And she's struggling to find herself herself through dating and friendships. I thought that was interesting because she's kind of um, learning about herself from Violet. The character Violet. Which was weird. Let's see. Glam Bistro said, oh, what about the one with... Yeah, the one who dated the handicapped guys. Yeah, she had that fetish with dating handicapped men and, and the legs and how she slept next to them. I was like, uh, yeah, you're weird. The weirdest one was probably the polyamorous uh, detached mother fruitarian. Yes, that, yeah, the reality TV show and the father who just basically was like feeding his kid um hamburgers and and buying stuff from walmart that he wasn't supposed to be doing and bought the pineapple and took the tag off of it it was that was pretty entertaining yeah fruitarian that was very interesting um there was one where the son saw period stains on his mother's nightgown it was so weird and minuscule but so relatable let's see i could see a lot of my facebook friends in that story and I wonder, this is the social media one, I wonder why I continue to be friends with them. So that one made me think about them a little differently, probably more worried about them. And that's that's the truth. A lot of people act out for attention because they're not getting it from somewhere and they're probably going through depression. It's We're in a really... It's weird because, you know, that meme going around, like, check on your strong friends. And it's like a lot of people put on fronts on social media to be happy and be this perfect person. And behind the scenes, it's like, you seem like you're happy from what you're posting on social media. You're joking around with everybody. And then all of a sudden, here comes a post of um, battling with depression. So it's really scary because... um you know, I'm, I'm a busy woman, so I don't have time to talk to all of my friends every single day. But it's like one of those that you check in every once in a while. But to know that your friends are going through these battles, but you think they're okay just based on what they're posting on social media is kind of, it's really scary. Yeah, I was moved by the mom who almost drowned her, her baby. It's um a really sensitive time. And especially like reading that story, um being a mother myself of twins and especially, you know, being scared for my son and what, I mean, even my daughter too, but mostly, or more, so I shouldn't say mostly, but more so my son um, and what he might be going through. And I'm also finishing up the Central Park Five. So there's a lot going on in my mind with that story in particular. It was, this is authentic advice. Yeah. Um, yeah, everybody's saying the chick with the disabled man was weird funny. Yeah, she just continually dated. Yeah, fruitarians were nuts. Like, her, her husband was completely going off the rails. Essence said that meme is so very true. I think social media is safe. They can look happy, but they don't have it, the energy. They don't have the energy to have those face-to-face -face interactions. And it, yeah, it's really scary. Is really scary. Um, and I can think back to a time where, where I was putting on a front for the gram. I mean, you know, I, my life, I mean, I'm a so I'm just a social person. I like to share stuff on social media. That's just who I am. It's what I do for a living. It's, it's, um, a passion of mine. It's, it's something that I love to do. I love social media. That's why I do what I do. Um, but at the same time, I can remember myself, you know, back in, 2012 as a new mother of twins and then I was also going through divorce um and that was very hard because here I am just had babies five months ago five months twins so not only am I learning to become a new mom my husband has now left me with two two five-month-old twins and I don't mean to get all dramatic and everything like that but you know 
in social media's eyes between us and and one of my best friends and his wife like at the time they looked at us as like the perfect couple so there was this image that i had on facebook which was true up until that point but then it was like i started to think well what's everybody going to think like he, he left me i'm getting divorced like what m- that's all that ran through my head was that what was going to happen um what were people going to think of me? That was probably my biggest fear. And I actually sh- ended up shutting down a whole Facebook page because I basically had been with him since I started it. So there was a lot of memories and wedding photos and honeymoon, like everything for the past, you know, seven years was on that page. And so I ended up shutting it down, A, because I wanted to get rid of those memories. And two, I just wanted to, um, I, I wanted to, um, you know, not deal with people and their questions. So I started a whole new Facebook page and just added like family, close family and really close friends that knew what was going on. It was, it was a trying time. Um, okay. So I see Zalika on here and I want to say hi to you because if y'all don't know, and you didn't see my post today, um, she's the author of fried plantain that came out today. So I just wanted to say, Hey, and thanks for popping on real quick. Um, you totally just made my day with that. So coming back, um, let's see, let's see. The only one I didn't like was the one about the celebrity. I kept thinking about Rihanna. What about the girl whose online boyfriend didn't want y'all, didn't want to talk face to face? Seems. Yes. Talk face to face. Okay. That's what you're trying to say. The girl whose online boyfriend never wanted to talk face to face. Yeah. Seems like, um today's times and catfishing and stuff too it was weird oh thank you bookish she said you are a phenomenal woman look at what you've created and you know what i'm more thankful for my experience in life because it pushed me to step outside the box and be right where i am today so no regrets but thank you for that i really appreciate it um the asmr i think girl yes that's what they called it was the asmr um That story was crazy. Thanks for the hugs, Rosa. I understand shutting down social media. Sometimes you have to do that. And sometimes I have to take breaks too. Um, It's what I do for a living. So not only am I on social media all day at work, then I come home and I'm dealing with book girl magic stuff. So it consumes a lot of my life. And so when I go on vacation, like I will be in a few weeks um, to Cuba. Let's hope I make it there Um, after today's controversy. But yeah, I completely shut down on social media just because I need that break. And it's like a sense of relief to me to not be on it. It's a good feeling. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Taking breaks are necessary from social media, but I try to just be my authentic self. If I'm going, well, I wouldn't say that I put everything out there um, negatively, but you know, I try to be me. Cuba is amazing. I'm excited to go. Was a little nervous today reading articles when I saw that headline that uh, cruise ships weren't allowed in there because that's exactly how I'm getting there in one month. (laughs) I forced myself to stay awake on Saturday to finish the book. I must have been half asleep because I don't remember some of these stories. Erica, I just said the same thing. Like, I just finished the book like four hours ago and I had to come home and literally refresh. Like, I have my iPad up here and it's basically a summary of each of the stories because there's so much going on and so many stories that connected that I I had to refresh my memory because I'm like what exactly is going on here yeah how our president is stopping all Cuba cruises yeah yep I've already booked mine it's good to go so I've been grandfathered in so I'm going to make it to Cuba one way or another um any thoughts did you guys see yourselves some of y'all may have answered this question already, um, but did y'all see yourselves in any of the stories or ones that you could really relate to? Um, did any of them make you think about, as a woman, your own bodies? Or make you more aware of of the role you play um, in the world as far as your, your gender, race, or class? Yeah, and then the other chick, the fruitarian, I'm like, her story was just wild. Then she's all into polygamy and, and has got all these boyfriends, and then they're just going to use the boyfriends for the show. I'm like, what is really going on right now? Craziness. 
loved when some of the story, yeah, the stories that connected Fatima. Wish there was more of that. I was thinking that too when they started talking about like the first few, those few stories connected with Fatima. And then I was like trying to see if the other stories connected in some way, if they were other characters and, and things like that. I thought that was really cool too. Um, yeah, Erica says, I see myself in the mom letters. Yeah, th those two were for sure petty betties. Like, yeah, I could definitely see myself like, dear, you know, and then the, the <laughs> I think the best part was like their signatures where they were like just adding stuff like I'm this and I'm that. I want to find that, that. Yeah, Lucinda, let's keep it real. Mon Monica and Lucinda. And then they're adding like the Jack and Jill chapter. Dr. Jordan and Monica Willis, like they're putting their address on there. It, yeah. That was outrageous. They were petty betties. Those two women were just having at it. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to look at that story. <laughs> While I don't approve of Chrissy's use of the term African booty scratcher. Yeah, I mean, they those moms were going hard. Like even talking about your child is overweight, like me, oh man, there was just some, and then like the, the signature, Dr. Lucinda M. Johnston, licensed therapist, author of Train Up a Child, Welcome Wagon, Westwood Primary School, events coordinator, Jack and Jill, Claremont chapter. Like they just kept adding all of this stuff on there. And I'm like, I don't know. I think that was my favorite was the two moms for sure. Talking about how uppity they are. Yeah, extremely good. Author of Every Voice Counts, Helping Children of Color Succeed in Predominantly White Schools. Yeah, I think that was by far my favorite, their tone. I liked the initial story about the comic book boys and hated how it ended. Yeah, with the police um, ends up shooting shooting both of them. Love that their identities didn't match what you would expect, but they still got treated by society police as if they were thugs. Yep. Totally agree with that. Um, and this is just a random point. Um, something else that I picked up, but I felt like I was reliving some memories because she was talking about Say My Name um, by Destiny's Child and then the Bone Thugs and Harmony um, the reference to the story that you were just talking about, the boys when he's dressed up like Justin Timberlake, like it just brought back to me those memories of growing up in the 90s and, and loving NSYNC and listening to Destiny's Child would be like late 90s, the Bone Thugs and Harmony, Crossroads, like it just brought back so many memories to the point where I was listening to Heads of the Colored People and um, on audio and then it was like, Five minutes before I got to work, I shut it off so that I could play Destiny's Child while I finished the rest of my commute just because I was like, ah, oh, that whole album, like writings on the wall, loved it. Loved every bit of it. Um, but definitely my first read by Nafisa Thompson Spires. I, I think she's absolutely amazing. Um, I'm interested to see um, what else she'll come up with in the future. Let me see. Glenn Bistro said there was there a story with someone constantly bleeding or sweating or something. I vaguely remember that. Yes. So that was the story. Um, I think that was Fatima was in that one. The body's defense against itself is it about self care and the importance of mental health. But yes, um, she had a bad sweating problem where she was constantly um, sweating and then bleeding through her pants and then was made fun of for, for that. Yep, you're exactly right. My favorite line from the mom story was, you display a volatile combination of residual ghetto and uppity negress, and that will be your undoing. Yes. They, I mean, they had some zingers. I think that when I look at all of the stories, that was by far my favorite. Yes, I would love to read a full novel by her. Yes. I think she's um, 
absolutely amazing. And I don't know if you, how many of you guys listened to the audio, but in the last chapter, it kind of, it said something about the book and the inspiration. Um, she got this, the, I guess some of the stories, pieces of it was, was taken from somebody else's work. Like the inspiration, it was almost like she did a remake and I wasn't familiar with, with the work that it came from and I'm trying to see if I can find it but at the end of the the audiobook the last three minutes it, she talks about it the dozens in its highest form yep yep um I'm trying to find it I wrote somewhere in my notes but um Yeah, and then it talks about about the struggles between upper middle class upbringing and the desire to fully connect with the black culture. It's like, I could connect with that. Um, just simply like growing up and not feeling black enough growing up because I, I grew up in the suburbs. You know, I was, um, you know, I played an all white sport. Like it was just... So sometimes, you know, you, you get made fun of, you talk like a white girl, this kind of stuff. So I could definitely relate to that story um, and seeking validation of my blackness. And I think that's not necessarily that I'm seeking validation now, but I find myself because I didn't grow up, um, you know, being submerged in black culture and things like that. Like I find myself reading up on it a lot now to kind of you know, be in the know. Oh, I'd love a novel by her. Which of those stories people would want to see a novel? I think because Fatima was in so many of the stories, I would love to see a story with the moms and it start out there and see how Fatima progresses later in life or maybe both the girls. Like seeing that, that for me would be an interesting novel. Okay, I have 20 minutes left on audio. Yeah, when you get to the very end after the story, there's like three minutes on the audio book where she discusses where the inspiration for that book and it comes from something else. Yeah, I was an Oreo too, definitely. <laughs> Erica said, I grew up hella black. Yeah, see, that totally wasn't me. I mean, I'm like, yeah, it just wasn't me. I grew up in the suburbs um, most of my life and then you play softball and and I love it to death but yeah I mean I, I'll be honest in saying that the culture just it wasn't there there was probably a full softball team of maybe 12 girls there was like maybe two or three of us on the team that were black um, on top of that I went to the College of Charleston which is an art school and again the reason I went there is because they had great softball programs so you, you end up going to an all-white college too so it's like there's whiteness all over me, you know what I'm saying? So that's just how I grew up. And so now I'm kind of on this mission to like read books by our people and learn more about our people. And that's kind of how the idea of black, uh, black girl magic, book girl magic came about. All right, let me come around to Instagram because there's some comments. Um, a question. Okay, which story would you like to see fleshed out? Okay, I can think I answered that because somebody asked the same question, which one I would like to see fleshed out into a novel. Y'all can all answer that question. Which one of the short stories you'd like to see fleshed out into a novel? Um, done with whitewash brush by... Done with a whitewash brush by James McCune Smith in the African American Picture Gallery that she mentioned in the book. Yes. Thank you for that. Because I was like, I knew it came from somewhere, but I couldn't remember because it's at the end of the audiobook. But yes. It's why I went to Howard. Yeah. If I, it, to be honest with you, I mean, and not to sound, but softball is what paid my way through college. So had there been more black schools that had good squads, the, the problem is, is you would think um, they'd have better softball teams and, and athleticism, but not in softball. So if for me to go to a school where there was any chance of me winning or performing good um, as a whole with the team, I had to, I had to go to a, a mostly white school. That was the choice that I had to make in order to, to, to get where I needed to be. So yeah, it wasn't an option, but it was always fun to play like, um, 
we would play South Carolina State, and then it's like the girls, some girls that I grew up with played on that team, so it was interesting to see, but yeah, I grew up surrounded by whiteness, <laughs> which isn't a bad thing, um, you know. Da, da, da. But yeah, overall, I, I thought this was cute. Um, I definitely want to see more from her, and hopefully something is coming um, but I think the the mom, if we could evolve that story, I'm trying to think if there's another story that I would want to become a novel. Will I write a novel? Yeah, I'm supposed to be doing that now. Um, working on my book. I would love to write fiction. Um... As a Pisces, I just am a dreamer and we have a lot of imagination. So actually like a snippet of what I told you guys about my divorce and things like that. I want to write a fiction novel that has my real life story kind of intertwined um, in it. So my goal is to eventually write a book at some point in time. I was hoping to do it this year and maybe um, when things slow down this summer. I can get started. I already have like an outline kind of written in characters and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's going to be a single woman's journey after divorce and kind of um, a little bit of, of pieces of my my life and my story. Um, and the fun part will be people reading it and trying to figure out what's true and what's not, especially people that really know me and what I went through. They'll have to figure out what's true and what's not. Don't think my ex-husband will be uh, too happy about that, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> you are still young. Take your time. Thank you. And it, that's, the, that's the truth. Like a lot of people don't even thrive until they, or truly like find their calling and thrive. Like when you look at a lot of authors or people who made it big, I mean, a lot of them don't, didn't do that until they started hitting their forties and fifties. So, um, especially when you look at a lot of writers. So yeah, Jamie said, can't wait for it. Let me come back over here. Um, I have a ton of debt. Yeah. See, it that was as far as college, like that was my choice. Like go to school, get a full ride and pay the way. But I had to make that choice of what school I was going to. And mind you, the College of Charleston is a beautiful, beautiful place to go to school. Um, I love the beach. So it was the, the perfect place for me. And, it, it, and I ended up winning some championships and stuff like that, too. So at the end of the day, it was the best decision for me. Um, and honestly, had I not gone through the journey and gone to mostly white schools and, and grew up surrounded with my surroundings being mostly white, I probably, Book Girl Magic wouldn't exist because this whole book club started on the basis of um, trying to submerge myself in my culture and learn more about my culture and my people and where they come from, from slavery on forward. So um, that was the basis of this book club was to read more books by black people and here we are. So I'm thankful for it. I like the collection as a whole. I think it does capture black experiences. I just want to give out a shout out to Sherry too. Um, she lives all the way in New Jersey and I got to meet her at BookCon. So I felt special that I got to meet um, one of our book club members across country. It was really cool. Any final thoughts from you guys on the book? Things you disliked? Maya says, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey. Oh, Maya Angelou says, wouldn't take nothing for my journey. Yeah, I agree with that. Let's see. I think this book just proves that blackness looks lots of different ways. Love that part. It does. It absolutely does. Like, there's so many different things that we deal with. Um, and I love that she hit on multiple points. And I think... That was one of the points in some of the questions that I had, some notes and questions that I had put on there was um, the overall message. Let me see. Yeah, but there's lots of ties to race in here. So many questions. I just. Yeah. How about the, the Violet, the story with the biracial chick that wants to be black? Um, and the the whole lip thing that was which lip she was supposed to use it was like she had a light lip and a dark lip or whatever yeah 
we as a people were amazing before slavery, which is why I put my foot down about slavery books. I agree. No, I completely agree with you, Eric. I think that there's um, a lot more to our story than starting at slavery. I completely agree with you on that. Um, I think for me, though, I was just oblivious to a lot. I mean, it's sad to say as a, an adult in her mid-30s, like... I was I was truly oblivious to a lot because we didn't learn these in our in our history books. So to learn of these past couple years of how I think um Barracoon was a big eye opener for me. Learning that like you know kidnapping people and bringing them over, like I've always heard of people coming on over in slave ships and I'm I don't know why in my head that didn't like just click or a bell didn't go off of yeah, they were kidnapped and brought over here. Like you know you always I don't know. It's just a lot. Like, I guess for me, it's like you hear this stuff, but you know, I never really thought about the things. So for me, it's like really embracing and accepting and, and understanding, I guess, is the best word to. I agree with that. 100% blackness comes in so many different forms. Agreed. Jessica said, I truly... Jessica, you keep switching platforms on me. Now you're on Instagram. I truly enjoyed this book very much. Looking forward to more from the author who commented on my review of it on my IG page. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, she's sweet. Um she's 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 one of those that'll interact with you. She's extremely sweet. It's a reason why I majored in history in college. There's a lot we have to learn. There's so much. Um I have so many books and it's like don't even know a place to start because there's just so much. You know, it's like I'll read one thing in Eloquent Rage, maybe want to read about Ida B. Wells and it's just like there's just so much um yeah i don't don't know where to begin a lot of times jessica's laughing yep but i'm glad you guys seem to enjoy it it definitely gave us a lot to talk about um this time around um as you guys know i'm trying to grab my book here hi jen i see you over here my college friend i was talking about as one of my friends from college um and I was just talking about the College of Charleston and how we were surrounded by whiteness um, in our college days. So, yeah. Jen will understand that more than anything, but I was just, yeah. She knows. Um, but as for those of you who don't know, our please read The People Could Fly with Your Kiddos. Okay. You guys are going to have to inbox me some of these suggestions that you have. Because I would really like to love to do that. And unlike me, my reading journey only started three years ago. So I'm starting them early. They love books. So I would love to get a collection of things that you guys think I should read. And also my kids. That would be great. Um, and if there are no other last minute comments. Um, sorry, my ring light's kind of bright. Uh, our June book of the month is The Women of Brewster Place um, by Gloria Naylor. I'm super excited to read this one. It's been on my list um, for a while. I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to incorporate it this year, but then I changed my mind and um, we were actually supposed to have a completely different book for this month, but I saw that Diverse Classics and Anna was reading it, so that encouraged me to partner with her and read it too. So I'm excited because I've heard nothing but great things about this book. Yeah, see, Jen said 90, that our college was 90% Caucasian. Yeah, believe it. Author Virginia Hamilton. Okay. Love this book. And Bailey's Cafe. That's going to be a reread for you. Yeah, and I also want to... Um, what did y'all think of the, televi the television series, the one that Oprah did based on this book? Um, I've heard nothing but great things, so I'm excited to see what it's all about. I've heard the, the women in these stories are quite amazing um so yeah i've got to get on that and start reading i'm so behind y'all like i just have not been motivated to read and i no, i take that back i'm lying it's not that i haven't been motivated to read it's that my kids have taken over my life like my daughter has all-star practices from six to eight three days a week i work 10 hour days starting at 6 30 finishing at five so you can imagine when i wake up at four o'clock to work out by the time i get my kids to bed by like mm, 8 30 9 o'clock i'm tired so i don't have time to read unless it's an audiobook 
on my commute to and from school, I don't have time to read. I can't motivate and I don't want to, like, if I'm sitting at home, I actually just want to take that second to relax and not do anything. So it's, it's a struggle. Okay, so, like, now you're talking about Bailey's Cafe. Erica said, ooh, I forgot about Bailey's Cafe. Okay, please, y'all send me a list of books, recommendations to my inbox. Pretty please, let's have a great conversation. It's okay, your energy is well spent. And that's kind of where what I have to understand is I'm in a different place than I was last year. Like last year I was banging out five and six books a month, but my kids weren't active in sports until the fall of last year. So now my life has kind of changed. So I have to be more realistic and say that I'll maybe get two to three books done um, rather than five, six or whatever. So I had to lower my goal anyways when I started the beginning of this year. But yeah, my life is just very different now. So I don't have time to read as much as... Um, she said, oh, <laughs> as much as I did. I feel the same way lately. I'm so behind on my reading schedule. It's been a struggle. Not in your inbox. I want to see the recommendations. What I'll do is the people that inbox me on, because some of them are coming from Instagram, I'll share them with you guys um, on Facebook. I'll, I'll be sure to do that. Guess what? Okay, so Erica just said, Renee, you must read Fly Girl for the Culture. So I put that on my summer reading list. If y'all saw on the blog... Um, I put a list of reads in the e news or the newsletter for June and on the blog today. That is going to be my read for July. Um, I'm going to Cuba on the 6th of July, so I think that's going to be the book that I take with me on the cruise. Um, so I'm definitely reading Fly Girl. Definitely doing that one for the culture, as Erica says. The real life as a mother of an of active children. Yeah, the, this is day in and day out. I mean, I was in New York last weekend la for... I mean, I've just been everywhere. Birmingham. Um, I was in Canada the last week in, in April. I'm going to Cuba. It, it's just, it doesn't stop. <laughs> so I'm sometimes just like, help. I love Fly Girl. Yeah, everybody says Fly Girl's amazing. I'm just, again, there's so much that I haven't read because my journey is still so new. So Fly Girl is definitely being read in July. I promise y'all that. Perfect. The sharing. Thanks. Yep. I'll share it to Facebook group and I'll probably whatever list I compile, I'll, I'll put it in my fa our Instagram story as well. Good thing you got your trip in just in time. Yeah, that whole Cuba thing. I was a little nervous reading articles today that I wasn't going to be able to go because this has been a bucket list item for a while, but I've been grandfathered in. I need to reread Fly Girl. The newsletter reminded me I was too young the first time. Well, maybe we can buddy read and read it next month if you're if you're down for that. I think Anna has to read it. Anna Isaac, Never Without a Book, hasn't read it either. So maybe that's something we can buddy read together um, for those that want to join. <coughs> Sherry said, I'm tired for you. Yeah, seven-year-old twins will definitely keep you active. But you know what? I, I love it. I love being a softball mom. I love... My son starts um, flag football on Thursday, so I'll have them in two sports for a couple of weeks overlap. So it doesn't stop. Um, so finding time to read has been very difficult, um, but I'm trying. So we'll see. Yes, I'm down. Okay. Great dance in Cuba. <laughs> I definitely plan to go go out at night. I've never read it either. I'm down for it. Okay, cool. So anybody who wants to read Fly Girl, that's the plan for July. Can't do it in, in June because I just got too much going on. But I plan to read it um, the beginning of July. So anybody who wants to buddy read with that that with me, just um, hit me up in the inbox and I will start a group chat for us to discuss and we'll plan to do that for July. I haven't read it either. Anybody who wants to join in? Y'all are more than welcome to. I'll start a thread on both um, Facebook for those who aren't on Instagram and Instagram. We can we can talk about that too. Cool. I'm so excited. There's so many people that want to read Fly Girl now. Now I don't feel like left out. Y'all know how to make a girl feel good over here. This is why I love this community. Y'all are the bomb.com. So cool. So I'm excited for that. Um... The Women of Brewster Place. I'm excited for that. I've got a whole new collection of books from BookCon that I just... <laughs> I don't know how I'm getting through this stuff, man. Oh, I also just got a box of um, books from... Who sent that to me? The Travelers by Regina Porter. 
Um, I just got a box Sunday night of seven of those books, so I will be giving those away to our book club members. They were generous enough, so I think that's going to be our August read, um, because I think it comes out in either July. I don't know. It comes out, but I'm going to be sending some of y'all and contacting y'all to give away some books because I have a bunch here for us to read. So I'm excited. We've We've got some good opportunities coming our way. Um, publishers are showing us love and, um, I'm excited for what's to come. I also am trying to incorporate more old stuff because I feel like there's so many books that some of you guys have read. I know as teens, um, in your early twenties that you, you read growing up that are just good conversation starters and probably just reminisce you know some of the things that you used to re read so I'm I'm trying to take you know I'm doing old and new with our book club just um you know adjust it as they should we read we do give us all the free books because we're out here reading like crazy and and you know we love free books yes we do but anyways um hope you guys are enjoying the reads I'm glad you guys for the most part enjoyed this one I think it was something different than what I would normally read but um it was a great short story collection and I really really enjoyed it so any final thoughts those of you that want to read fly girl be sure to inbox me so I can start a group chat for that for July great work give yourself grace and keep pushing thank you Dorless Dorless knows me from my days of being a married woman before kids and all that stuff. So a lot of people have seen me grow a lot in the past um, 10 or so years. Thank you for doing this. You're so welcome. I'm glad I figured out a system to be able to put two phones up and, and stream live um, on both so I can hit my people on Facebook who aren't, or hit my people on Instagram who aren't necessarily on Facebook so that you guys can get the chat. So thank you guys for... You'll reread Fly Girl too. Sweet. I'll start a thread in in the Facebook group as well. For those of you on Instagram have no idea what I'm talking about, we have a private Facebook group. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash book girl magic. It's a private Facebook group where we basically cut up all day, post what we're reading, joke around, um, talk about the books that we're currently reading as well as the book of the month through, you know, we I post articles and things on there more so than I do on Instagram. So if you're interested, head over there um, and you can join that group if you're on Facebook. But I'm starting to go live on both platforms um, just to hit people on both platforms because I know there's a lot of people. I used to only do it in Facebook and I know there was a lot of people that only um, were on Instagram or only on Facebook. So I'm trying to hit up both so that you guys can join in on the phone. Erica said, the Facebook group is lit. It is, literally. It's it's full of nothing but literature and women cutting up and having a good time and great conversations. Um, yeah, we have a good time in there. So feel free to join, send the request, and I can add you in there. We definitely do grow um, through reading. That has been one of the greatest things um, that's where my reading journey started three years ago was I made a goal to better myself, mind, body, and soul. And reading a book a month was where I wanted to grow with my mind. So I we definitely do, which is why I've become addicted to it and, and finding what I love. By the way, did y'all see that I met Jasmine Guillory? <laughs> that's just been the highlight of my week. Y'all know that's my favorite author. And that was the coolest thing to happen to me. Um last this past month I guess this past couple of days but con was amazing y'all have to um get there if you can next year fly girl it'll be fun to reread yeah it'll be fun for me to reread with y'all because yeah y'all will experience what I'm experiencing yes author crush for sure yeah totally and y'all and when I tell y'all it was like an act of God that I ran into Jasmine Guillory. So this is what happened. I didn't see her all weekend because I was hanging out with friends, going to panels, just really doing our own thing, not really pressed on on a set plan, right? So I said, all right, I haven't seen Jasmine yet. This is Sunday. I hadn't seen her yet. So I'm like, I'm gonna pop into her little panel. There's a panel that I wanted to go to uh, at 1.30 with Damon Young and Jacqueline Woodson. So I was like, I'm gonna pop into Jasmine's um, panel, which starts at 1.15. I'm staying for 10 minutes and then I'm leaving to go to the 1.30 panel, right? So I'm like, cool, got a little video. Y'all saw me posting in my stories. You can still see it in the book con tab of my stories. 
So I go in there, take a little video, and I leave. I'm like, all right, I'm out. So I go to my other chat. Literally, we go downstairs to get our luggage because we have it in holding. Um, we go to the bathroom, we change clothes, and I'm walking with Tracy from the Stacks Pod, and I'm looking over and I'm like, oh, there's one of the authors that was on the panel from uh, Jasmine Guillory's, the romance pa panel, right? And I'm like, man, too bad it's not Jasmine Guillory, though. Ha, 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 being funny and joking, right? So we keep walking, we keep walking. Tracy stops to do something. I don't know if she's talking to somebody or what, right? And I'm walking, I stop, I look up, and I see this, like, this purple dress or this pink. I don't even know what color you want to call it, but it was like this fuchsia dress. And I look, and I was like, no fucking way. Like, there's no way. I go, Anna, hold my suitcase. And I literally, like, throw my suitcase at her, right? <laughs> More like hand it to her. But anyways, I like toss it over to her, right? My carry on. And I'm like, hold on. I'll be right back. So I walk over. There's a lady at Starbucks making her coffee. Her back is turned to me, right? And I kind of like creep up on her and I'm like, Jasmine? And she turns around and I'm like, oh my God. I was like, I'm Renee. I have another Book Girl Magic shirt on. I'm like, I'm Renee. I'm Book Girl Magic. I can't even tell you if I hugged her or not or how that whole thing, like if we shook hands. I don't know. I think we made a hug. But anyways... She was just like, thank you for everything you've done for me. Like, you've been awesome. She's like, just thank you for everything that you've done. And so then Tracy came over. She's the real MVP, okay? Because I was about to just, you know, take a selfie with my phone. So Tracy comes over and was like, yeah, let me take this picture of you. And she she popped about four pictures. And I mean, literally, when I tell y'all, I was 10 feet with my suitcase from the door. Like, I'm literally getting ready. The doors are 10 feet away from me. I'm getting ready to leave BookCon for good to go to the airport and Jasmine Guillory is at the Starbucks standing outside making her coffee. And I run into her right as I'm about to walk out the door. I'm like, if that ain't God telling me that it was meant for me to meet her, I don't know what it is. But anyways, that's like the highlight of my trip. See y'all over here laughing at me. Yes, perfect meeting. I'm reading these, sorry. I'm moving my phone around in places it doesn't need to be moving. I'm <laughs> laughing at all these comments, laughing at me on. <laughs> Kids are encouraging, enjoy your trip, thank you. True story, you hugged. I did, see, Anna said I hugged her, look at that. I hugged Jasmine Guillory. I couldn't even, this is, I can't even remember what was going on. I was trying to remember if I did or not. Thank you, Anna, see, she's paying. I, I literally tossed my suitcase at Anna and didn't tell her what I was doing or where I was going, I just left and took a beeline. Her suitcase was heavy, FYI. Yeah, it was. It was packed with books. <laughs> Look, Jessica said, won't he do it? I'm telling y'all, it was meant to be. Yeah, BookCon was great. I'll be there next year. Um, I'm thinking about it. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it just because I did miss my daughter's uh, all-star tournament this weekend being at BookCon, which I had planned BookCon before. She made the all-star team, so what can you do? But um, there is an anti-racism book festival that is in dc end of april and we're all talking about going to that um so yeah the first one was earlier this year uh we missed it so we're gonna try to maybe go to it next year or try to hit up some different festivals and see what else is but BookCon was amazing from beginning to end it's definitely something you should experience once um if you have not done it i would definitely try to make that trip um i'm sure i'll do it again just probably better prepared for it because I think Anna and I decided that we were going, or I did. I think she had an idea that she was going, but I decided that I was going like a month ago. So, um, you know, I did everything, hotel, flight, all of that kind of last minute. So it was just kind of, I made it happen, but um, I probably would plan a little bit better for that. So anyways. It's 8.53. I've rambled on talking to you guys. I enjoy being on here. You guys make this so easy for me, and it's awesome. I love our, our time together um, discussing our books. So I hope that you guys have an awesome night. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Again, book recommendations, message me. Those who want to be who want to read Fly Girl, go ahead and message me. Um, I'll get those groups going, and we can get it popping. It was bananas, but worth it. Sure was. All right, love you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.